Hey everybody, welcome to Take Heart Today. I want to look for our, our final time at the subject of prayer. And the question I want to try and address is how does God answer prayer? Really that is a much, uh, it's a question that's much too big to, to do in a take heart and to do in a, you know, a short thought. Um, so my answer is obviously going to be inadequate, but um, I'll share it anyway. Uh, the, I think the first thing to say on this is that God does answer prayer. And Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, as well as teaching us the Lord's Prayer, he also uh, says this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. I won't read much more than that, but he goes on to re-emphasize that. And the point he's making is that prayer and answers to prayer go together. In the same way that hands fit gloves and acorns and oak trees go together and the requests of a child and the answer of a parent goes together. So prayer and answers go together. They make the complete whole. And so when we pray, he's telling us to expect an answer. Everyone who asks receives. That being said, probably lots of us have had occasions where we felt like God hasn't answered our prayers. And I remember a little while ago coming across something Rick Warren said. Um, he says this. Six ways that God answers prayer. Yes. No. Not yet. You be the answer. Trust me. And are you kidding? Um, I'll just unpack a couple of those. Because I actually find it really helpful to think God answers prayer. But the answer is not always the one that I want. Um, it helps me process how I approach prayer. So the first one, are you kidding? Um, sometimes that is God's response to our prayers. And uh, often looking back at particular times, we'll be quite grateful that the answer that he gave us was not what we were asking for. If I uh, had had answers to all of my prayers, I would have married Britney Spears when I was 13 years old. And I don't think that would have worked out well for me or for Britney. So sometimes the answer is no. <laughs> I'm not going to give you that. Uh, as a sort of incredulous note, other times the answer is no, but it's a much more serious thing. So there will be times where we look back and we think, yeah, I understand that, God, why you didn't answer that prayer at that time. But there'll be some times in life where we'll look back and we'll, we won't understand. Um, um, I, think it's, I think there'll be things we'll never understand in this life as to why the answer to that was no. Um, you know, probably the biggest of those would be when we've prayed for somebody to live and they've died. And that's utterly shattering. And sometimes what can happen is our confidence in God's willingness to answer prayer can be shattered alongside that. And um, one of the things that I find helps me with this is, is seeing that in the scripture there are people who had things they prayed for and the answer was no. So Moses is one of those. He prayed that he go into the promised land and God refused to allow him to do that. David, um, his son, uh, died and he prayed that that wouldn't happen, but it happened. And ultimately, Jesus, he, he received the answer, no. When he's praying in Gethsemane, he says, Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Um, but it wasn't taken from him. And uh, I remember hearing Nicky Gumbel in his Alpha talk about prayer share the story of how he was playing squash with a, a good friend of his when and his friend died of a heart attack on the squash court. His friend had six children and he just dropped dead. And uh, Nicky said he'd never prayed, you know, more fervently than he prayed in that moment for him to be healed, for him to come back to life again, and, and it didn't happen. And... He, he said that night he was just absolutely sleepless the whole night. And at five o'clock in the morning, he went for a walk the next day. And he just said, I just said to the Lord as I was walking, I do not understand this. You know, I cannot understand how you would allow this to happen. And yet he said, but I'm still going to trust you. And I'm still going to pray to you. Um, even though I don't understand, I'm still going to do that for the rest of my life. So sometimes the answer uh, and it's not the answer we want, but it is an answer, is no. Um, there's a wrestle we have to do uh, in that, to continue to trust him. Sometimes the answer God gives us is, you be the answer. 
what would it look like to be the answer to the prayers that I'm praying right now? And I wonder if occasionally as Christians we can maybe over-spiritualise things a little bit when we think about the answers to prayer. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the guy that lives by the river and there's a kind of announcement on the news that um, there's going to be a flood. But he says to himself, do you know what? I'm a Christian. Uh, God loves me. I'm going to pray. And uh, so he prays for God to save him, even though everyone's been told to evacuate. And then a little while later, after the flood waters start to rise, someone goes past in a boat and they say, hey, hey, you in the house. You know what? Hey, hop in the boat. The waters are rising. I'll take you to safety. And the guy yells back, no need. You know, God loves me. I'm a Christian. I pray God is going to save me. And um, and then a little while later, as the waters get higher and higher, a helicopter flies over and they shout down with a megaphone. Hey, hey, guy in the house. Hey, we'll save you. We'll lower a, a ladder and we'll take you off to safety. And the guy yells back to him, you don't need to. You don't need to. I'm a Christian. I pray. God loves me. God is going to save me. Anyway, he dies and uh, he finds himself at the gates of heaven and he demands an audience with God. And says, you know, I thought you loved me. Um, what happened there? And the Lord just says to him, okay, I sent you a news report. I sent you a guy in a boat and I sent you a helicopter. What the heck are you doing here? And sometimes when we think about answers to prayer, we can think, oh, that's not an answer because it's not very spiritual. You know, we're praying for provision and we get an opportunity to apply for two or three jobs. Or uh, we're praying that we get an A in our exams. <laughs> How many of us have done that one? And we don't do any study. And, it, and it's like, okay, sometimes it is a case of he answers us um, by providing an opportunity or in some other way for us to take advantage of and to, in a sense, um, take hold of it ourselves in our own strength. What might it look like? I've been asking myself that question. What might it look like for me to be the answer to some of the things that I'm praying for? And that's not a not spiritual answer. That can be an answer. Um, sometimes the answer is not yet. And in Luke 18, Jesus tells the story of the persistent widow. And explicitly we're told, he says that to, to teach us to pray and not give up. And when we understand that prayers and answers, they go together like acorns and oak trees. Um, again, that's a really... It's good to keep that at the forefront of our mind because what I can think is, oh, sometimes it's, I haven't received an answer, so I just quit. And it's not that the answer God gave me was a no, it's just that I just got tired and so I just stopped praying um, and assumed it was a no. And sometimes the answer is not yet and just persist and keep going. Mike once described it to me like sometimes when we, we pray, like a, a flash of lightning comes down from heaven and we get the answer that we're after. And other times it's like a, a turtle sets off from heaven and you have to kind of pray it down. But sometimes it's just not yet, keep going. And then other times it might be trust me or it might be yes. And um, the reason there's a lot of nuance in this is because sometimes it's a mix of a whole bunch of those. Probably the prayer request that has been on my heart most in the last few years has been my son, my little boy Caleb, who's two and has got genetic disorder. And when we found out about that, we prayed for healing and he, he still got the disorder. He had to have a major heart operation after he was born. And it's been a whole mix of those answers in different ways. Sometimes the answer has been no. Sometimes the answer has been, um, you know what, I'll provide this for you, amazing medical care. Sometimes the answer has been yes. And we've, we, we're so grateful that some of the things associated with his condition, he doesn't have any signs of at the moment. Other, other times the answer's been, you're just going to have to trust me. And uh, it's hard to live in that place sometimes. I really understand that. Um, but I don't want to be a Christian who just, I suppose, grows weary of bringing my prayers to God because I don't always get the, the answers that I'm longing for. I think we'd be, we'd be missing out if we lived it that way. Instead, I want to take hold of what Jesus says here, which is everyone who asks receives. And I, will, I want to keep bringing my requests to the Father, knowing the answers will not always be exactly what I'd like to receive. But knowing that even when that happens, my relationship with him will still mature.